Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Wrath of the Righteous with me, Break It Down. I'm gone. Let's continue Leoder's investigation here at Darren's party. But before we go speak to Darren and convince him to move from his bedroom, we need to track down other companions and explore the new dialogue. I just saw a portrait of Darren's mom. So she was an Asmar too, huh? Some people get a celestial bloodline, tons of money, and a title. Others get horns and a slap in the face. We do it my way. I wonder why the demons who attacked Heaven's Edge chose Plague as their weapon. It was so... unimaginative. There's so much food here. I'll let Soot eat everything she wants. She'll become twice as fat and won't be able to fly anymore. Follow if you dare. Both this place and its owner make me think how deceptive appearances can be. But I cannot deny that the wine here is very good. Compulsive food consumption may be a symptom of several serious neurological disorders. It may also indicate that the food in question boasts exceptional palatability. How could a single family or even a person live in a house large enough for my entire tribe? Don't think I underestimate the importance of quality rest for soldiers. But this revelry isn't rest, it's decadence. Button frogs may shield us from horror and despair. One should use this shield sparingly. Vendevians sure like to put on airs, but they know how to throw a party. I'll give them that. I'm off. Darren arches a brow at you, but doesn't seem to be disturbed in the slightest by your entrance. He's not trying to cover up or get dressed any faster. Commander, I assume that you have an urgent matter that requires my attention. What is this room? Darren casts a look around the room as if he had never seen it before, then shrugs carelessly. Just a random room. I'll tell my servants to make some rooms ready. This is one of the rooms they chose. I am absolutely confident that you won't be able to persuade Camellia to dance with you. Ah, now that is a challenge. I can imagine her either graciously acquiescing or deftly slipping deadly poison into my wine just for suggesting it. Such as our dearest Camellia. You've given me a brilliant idea. It's like distracting a toddler. I see that you're able to do as I asked. Prepare yourself. This vision might be rather difficult to watch. Young Darren stands motionless by the Countess's bed. His face is pale with fear, and for good reason. His mother's heavenly beauty is gone. Her smile, once beaming with vitality and happiness, looks more like the grimace of a corpse. Only her golden hair still glows. A sad reminder of the healthy young woman that she was just a few hours ago. Mother. Can you hear me, mother? Day, my boy. How did you get here? The Countess's voice is fading. Don't come any closer. I... this disease. Mother, listen. The revered Nestor has sealed the gates. He says that he won't let anyone leave the estate. The plague reaches the larger settlements. Nobody will be able to stop it. He claims this is why the demons attacked us in the first place. They knew that we would call upon the strongest clerics to heal us, and those clerics would catch the disease and die as well. The Fat Baron and his family tried to escape, but three armed paladins barred their way and said they would not let them go. Mother, we need help. Canavras is full of clerics, wizards, and demons who know... Demons know who else. They might know how to stop it. We need to get there as soon as possible. We must obey the revered Nestrin. We're the lords of Mendev, we must protect our people. If the plague, if it reaches Canabras, thousands of innocent people will die. I don't care about any innocence. Darren's voice rises to a shout. You're ill, mother. You, you, you're dying. You must tell them to open the gates and take you to Canabras. They won't listen to me. But you're the lady of the estate. 
They can't refuse you. I... I can't. I must... Please leave, my dearest. Don't lose hope. You can still... A convulsion overtakes the Countess's body. The last words are swallowed by a long, guttural groan. The odor warily rubs his temples, but his face is unreadable. Now I have an answer to one of my many questions. Nobody went to Canabras in search of help, because the revered Nestrin didn't let them. He valued the safety of the city more than the lives of his flock at the estate. What a difficult choice it must have been. He made the right choice. There was no other way. I'm almost certain that Count Darren has another opinion on this matter. A very, very strong one. Yoda rubs his chin thoughtfully. I've never been in the revered Nestrid's position, but I know the price of difficult decisions, especially those that you have to make quickly. I have no right to judge him, but we must continue our investigation. The next site I'd like to examine is the Great Hall. That is where we found the remains of Nestrin and the demons. I assume that he killed them in a confrontation, but we must make sure of that. Please help me clear the area so that I can study it. I do what I must! You're an extraordinary dancer, Lady Camellia. That is the truth, not flattery. You, on the other hand, are an extraordinary liar count. And that is the truth, not an insult. That's the same dialogue as from before. I'm gone. There's a feverish gleam to Darren's eyes, under either tipsiness or some overabundance of emotion. Oh there, Donald. Billy's frosty attitude breaks my heart, but that dance with her was easily one of the best moments of the evening. How you enjoy my party? Are you having a good time? How about you, Darren? Are you having fun? Any fun? Of course I'm having fun, Darren says defiantly. What's wrong? You're going to spend my whole life in fear and mourning. Blaming myself for what happened. Fine. Let's change the subject. I thought the unique ambience of Heaven's Edge and the fact that we're on the very border of the world wound would make this celebration special. I thought the past would resurface and make itself known. Darren smirks bitterly. Bitterly. Excuse me. Well, it seems even ghosts don't wish to attend my parties anymore. What can we do to liven up the evening? You know what I think? I think it's time for a drinking contest. Ah yes, the tried and trusted method for salvaging a dull party. For salvaging anything, actually. I'm ready. Who's my competition? Ulbrich, we show how they drink in Old Sark course. I'll ask the odd contest in my day, but never a drinking contest. It's the first time for everything. Only hope that after our belt, you do not fall into a dead sleep for another hundred years. Let's drink until one of us falls unconscious or begs for mercy. That was just a little warm-up, I say. Up for more. Whoa, this is serious drink. We didn't have this back in my day. I'm sure you didn't. One making is a complicated science verging on magic. Let's come up along in leaps and bounds of the years that you spent slumbering in stone. Come on, Ulbrich. Don't let me down. This house will run out of drink before I run out of steam. Whoa. Are we done here? Or are you ready for another round? I've disgraced myself. I'm now drunk by a city-born Poppinjay in a silk shirt. 
This is what happens when an overconfident barbarian issues a challenge to civilization. <laughs> and normally I like to be the one to drink against Aaron, but I hadn't seen Ulbricht's dialogue in that competition before. Because he has to be in your party when you come to Heaven's Edge, even though all of your companions are available here. Otherwise, you won't have that dialogue option available. And my grandfather. Or maybe my great-grandmother put this bottle in the family cellar. And it proved loyal to the scion of the illustrious Arendays. Huh. But why didn't I bet you'd lose? My kindness and generosity truly know no limits. Darren looks a bit unsteady on his feet. I don't feel very well. Hey everyone, let's go back outside. I pick need to get some fresh air in my lungs. Here we are again, Commander. The odor looks grim but focused. So let us take another glimpse into the past. A ripple of laughter flows through the hall. It begins as a sweet, charming chuckle, then turns into a rasping cackle that makes Darren huddle even deeper into his corner. Why are you running from me, my sweet prince? Come on, let me touch you. I'll give you... The booming voice of an old man dressed in Iomidean robes shakes the walls of the hall. Get away from him, demon. Let the boy go. By the blade of the inheritor, you touch him only over my dead body. You're pathetic, old cleric. You're the guardian of this charming little prince, but you guarded him in vain. The disease is already circulating in his blood, and soon he will rot before your very eyes. You won't be able to help him, and I... I can at least make sure his death is beautiful, clean, and sweet. The demoness turns her eyeless face to Darren and licks her lips. A coarse laugh escapes the young man's throat. We'll see about that. The other turns uh, toward you in astonishment. Joplas of sweat glistened on his temples. Something is wrong, Commander. My spells are not working as expected. It's as if some kind of supernatural explosion occurred here ten years ago blending everything together. The magical auras, the emotions, the memories. I'll try again to read it. Could it be dangerous? I cannot say for certain, but it is unlikely. The past is in the past, and no one can travel through time except for some uniquely powerful entities, like Aeons, or perhaps the eldest of the first world, like Sheikah. Even though the past of this place is horrible, it poses no threat to us in the present. Please continue. Just give me a moment to focus. I'll try to channel my visions and feelings to you as accurately as possible. Darren, my boy, what is going on? Leoder's muscular shoulders suddenly begin to shake. The vision he is channeling does not change, but you feel something enormous and chilling silently infiltrate the reality around you. The presence of this nameless being becomes almost palpable. Some alien entity is talking to him. Hurry, old cleric. Stop him right now. You really want to see what happens when... Save me. Can you save me? The presence thickens into something more tangible. The entity is silent. You feel your blood pulsing in your temples. And each beat brings a new image. Or rather, a new notion. Help brings a feeling of relief and safety. Exchange makes the pulse stronger, more demanding. Gate and secret come immediately after. The images become heavier, almost visible. Secret. Keep the secret. Otherwise, death. 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 The gruesome images whirl through your mind, filling it with pain and fear, and then it all starts again. Help. Exchange. Secret. Death. Esther stretches out a shaking hand, suddenly looking like a doddering old man instead of a mighty cleric imbued with holy power. Darren, wait. The thing you're about to let loose is even worse than these demons. Darren's body is quivering like a taut bowstring. His eyes dart from the cleric to the demoness is frantically casting protective spells. Demons, saints, I'm so fed up with all of you. Burn. <laughs> the other opens his eyes with a groan and gets back on his feet. His legs are wobbly, his eyebrow is cut, but he seems not to notice. Sincere sorrow is written on his face, as well as a strong hint of horror. What a misfortune. No. What a disaster. 
Everything is far worse than I imagined. Are you alright? The strain, the emotions, they overwhelmed me. It made me faint like an agitated youngster. It is nothing, really. I'm not able to cast any spells for the rest of the day. But aside from that, I'm fine. Do you understand now what happened ten years ago? The Inquisitor slowly exhales through clenched teeth. It says in a low voice, still massaging his temples. Yes and no. Darn it. My thoughts are astray. I'll try to explain everything to you in full detail. Many living things are capable of performing the most extraordinary feats, good or bad, when a deadly threat looms over them. Ten years ago, Count found himself cornered in every sense of the word, and he allowed some alien entity to intercede for him. It frightens me that all my experience as an Inquisitor is completely useless in this case. It does not resemble anything I've ever heard or read about. This entity, I think I'll call it the other, possesses uncanny power. It was capable of instantly killing three greater demons, a mighty cleric, and a host of other mortals. You saw everything yourself. What's even worse is that this entity, this other, it is still here. The other takes a long pause. His gaze is drawn to the chamber where all the guests are laughing and dancing. Darren's eloquent voice rises above the music for a moment. He's asking someone to bring more wine and add more logs to the fire. I don't know what exactly this creature is, but I know what it did to the Count. It turned him into a living gateway. The other is not inside the Count's body, it's not directly controlling his mind. That's why there are no obvious signs of possession. But it is looking through his eyes. It treats him like a window into our world, and it can instantly step through it to wreak whatever havoc it desires. Does Darren know anything about all this? Yes, of course he does. Did you hear what the other tried to convey to us? Help in exchange for a secret. Death. Death to those who know the truth. He wants to have an opportunity to use a count as a gateway without anyone knowing. This is what made Darren deny that he remembered anything about the conclusion of the events at Heaven's Edge. What might the other want? This is the strangest thing about it all. It came to this world ten years ago, and it's still here, right? All this time it has been watching us through the eyes of the Count. Had it, for instance, wanted to kill Her Majesty the Queen, it would have had plenty of opportunities to do so. The Count can get close to practically every influential figure in Mendev, but the other refuses to act, or its interests lie in some other sphere. Did the other kill everyone then? The disease was not to blame. Not everyone, just Nestrin, his paladins, and the few remaining guests. Darn it. I know that it was the work of a mysterious, omnipotent entity, but it still stings. I was here ten years ago, and I didn't check everything personally. And those who did failed to sense that something was wrong. Could the other be the reason why my companions kept finding severed heads among my, their belongings back in Canabras? It seems very likely. I'm almost certain you are right. People tend to lose their heads when they get too close to Count Arende anyway. Ha, huh, I do apologize. That was inappropriate. Perhaps your gruesome findings of the heads of some cultists who tried to kidnap the Count during the Canabra slaughter. Or perhaps they provoked the, count, the other, sorry, not the Count, and I, in some other way. We have to do something. Yes. Now I understand Father Nestor perfectly. I must make a crucial decision despite a dearth of information. The Inquisitor falls silent for a while, then he looks you right in the eye. Commander, first and foremost I must apologize to you. Second, I must ask you to keep this secret. What are you so sorry for? I apologize for dragging you into this mess. You see, the other, an entity of immense power, stated very clearly that it would kill anyone who found out the truth. Anyone who knows that the Count is actually its living gateway. I suppose that the secret is currently known to three people in Galarian. You, me, and Count Darren. And that means... The Order gives you a crooked smirk and shrugs. Why should I keep it a secret? Well, for the reason we were just told. As soon as the Count finds out that we know his secret, the other will understand it as well. We do not know what it is and what exactly is the scope of its powers, but we do know that it would dispose of anyone who might reveal its existence. I've made a decision, the Elder says gravely. I will not tell anyone about the discovery we've just made, not even the Queen or my superiors. Instead, I'll immediately go to Nerosian and sift through all the archives of the Inquisition in order to find out what exactly we are dealing with 
how it can possibly be defeated. I may also make some cautious inquiries in other places, including Absalom. Still, I will not reveal the truth until I have found at least some reliable information. I am asking you to do the same. Specifically, do not say a single word about our investigation to the Count himself. So you want me to lead the crusade while carrying a bomb that may explode at any moment? I'm afraid that you won't be able to hide from the consequences when this bomb does explode. It is up to you to decide, though. What are you going to do with Darren himself? At the very least, he is guilty of letting the other enter our world. Right now, I'm a lot more concerned about the other. But when we find a way to get rid of this entity, the Count will have to stand trial. Many things about this case are still unclear, including the extent of his guilt. Did he call upon the other by himself, or did he simply answer its call? Could he refuse its offer, or would it have led to his immediate death? Every detail is important, and every testimony needs solid proof. That is the difference between righteous justice and blind vengeance. Fine, I will keep it a secret. The other lets out a sigh of relief. You made the right choice. I recommend that you go back to the guests and spend the rest of the evening as you please. Anything else might raise suspicions. I must leave immediately in search of the knowledge we all need so desperately. Farewell, Commander. May the light of Iomidae guide your path. A later Hawkblade will try to keep your path to triumph clear of any unwanted guests. Follow if you dare. I don't know if my opinion matters to you at all, but you're the very best guest I could ever wish for. I'm guessing that dialogue changes based on what you tell him during each distraction event. Woo, I've eaten enough for 10 men. And still, the festivals in our village were much more fun. We didn't have all these delicacies, but we celebrated with spirit. You know what I just realized? Garrett is afraid to come here, so that's why he did it. Because of that fear. I don't want to complain. I'm not sure I'll be able to endure another hour of this outrageous debauchery. I like the party. It's a pity it's already coming to an end. I'm off. Fine. I admit that the celebration wasn't that bad. I even feel less inclined to give Darren a good slap. I've been watching our account and wondering. If you imagine his head as a boiling pot, what kind of brew is bubbling inside? Are we leaving already? Yeah? No? Oh, it might stay in for a little while. I hope this travesty is finally over. I do what I must. There's a common opinion that any party like this one must inevitably end with a fight. Hmm. If you're trying to encourage me to check this hypothesis personally, I'd rather observe from afar. I'm gone. Alright, well we're all done here. So I'm gonna call it here for now. Next time we will continue exploring this area. We're actually gonna go back to Heaven's Edge next time and see if we can succeed at that perception check. Because uh, when we go back, we'll have the whole party actually with us. We've got Lan and Ulbrig for our two perception guys. I think Wolgif. has a higher perception as well. Yeah, 18. So that gives us more chances. Alright, either way, I'm going to call it here for now. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you guys in the next one.